Well, what have we here? Nice, uh, tidy looking engine bay. The only thing is, um, been having some issues recently with slight misfire, a um, little bit of hesitation, and I've had a look round without removing anything. I can see a cracked HT lead. Uh, we've got an old looking coil. I can see a little crack on the jacket of the uh, the distributor cap, housing, or whatever you want to call it, the, the jacket of the distributor cap. Even though that doesn't mean anything, it just tells me that it's it's got to be quite old. The leads themselves look a little bit worn out and aged. So I thought, why not just give it a bit of a an ignition system overhaul? So we've got a brand new coil to go on. Got brand new ignition leads, distributed cap, rotor arm, and four new spark plugs. That's what we're going to be doing today. Now. If you're not familiar or you don't have access to the firing order to, for your engine, which is really easy to get hold of these days, the Surefire most simple way to do it is to take one plug off at a time and replace it and follow until you've finished all the leads. However, if you're changing them all, you can just pop them all off and lay that down, get your new stuff and assemble it all in exactly the same way making sure everything's orientated correctly and pop it all back on, nice and easy. That's what I'm going to be doing today. So, I'm just going to start by snipping these little uh, zip ties, pulling the uh, HT leads off the spark plugs and trying to get, this is going to be the tricky bit, I'm going to be trying to get in here just look there, if I can even get the camera in, you can barely see it, but you can just see, just in front of my finger there, there's the head of a bolt. Let's see if I can get a better camera angle. Let's have some light. Just see it there, the head of a bolt. It's an 8mm bolt. If we look at the new one, if we look at the new one, we can see there's three of them. So that's going to be fun. Luckily, the bottom two are either side, so they are reachable. That can then come off. That'll take the king lead with it, which is connected on the bottom. And we'll just take the whole lot off, including all the leads and unplug the king lead from the coil there and uh, reassemble with the new, the new kit. I do apologise if all you can hear is wind. I did put in a no wind request today but unfortunately it wasn't a successful one. Oh wow, look at that, that's just snapped. That's just snapped off, that was barely sitting in place. These, these clips are very brittle. Able to get it to do it now, but that one just snapped in my hand. So they've been exposed to many heat cycles. That one's come off in one piece. That one's come off in one piece. This one's more difficult to reach, but it has come off in one piece, but they do look old. They look old, and they look crusty. Not too bad on the corrosion side though. That's the, uh, I'm going to have to remove that piece of rubber separately. I can't get in with my fingers, so let's get some needle nose. Focus. There we are. There's the rest of the rubber boot. So that exposes our four spark plugs. Take those out later. Now, 
to uh, try and access these bolts. So I'm just going to move these leads out of the way a little bit just to give myself a bit more room. Okay, so I've temporarily removed two of the plug leads, remembering which one is which. That gives me clearance through the middle here to get an 8mm socket. An 8mm deep socket, thin walled onto a little quarter inch ratchet and undo this in a very tedious manner, a couple of teeth at a time. But it is, it is undoing. Follow that with the other two bolts and that should be off. Okay, so that's released there, so I'm going to try and get this out of the area, it's quite a tight squeeze. There we go, that's free now. We can see the rotor arm on the back of the distributor, we can have a look inside here and oh dear, would you look at that, a little bit of uh, oil residue, looks like there's a, a distributor shaft seal leak there. Although not a massive one because it's not losing oil, it might just be seeping through. So if I then take this off the end of the ignition coil, I can then pull the whole lot out and this can then be replicated with the new gear ready to go back on. Okay, so the uh, rotor arm is just a push fit, so I should be able to just wiggle that off. And there's a little bit of a gasket coming off here which is all horrible and manky. Is it a gasket or is it someone using a piece of cardboard box to try and uh, soak up the oil? That's strange. So anyway, this will only go on one way. It's a push fit, got a new one to fit now. If we look at the edge, you can see it's quite third up there. So it's, it's been well used and there's a nice little uh, dark mark of uh, worn away graphite from the centre contact inside the distributor cap so obviously there is some work to be done here but it's all pretty uh, isolated really I can't get to it properly so I'm gonna have to do that at a later date when there's more serious work being carried out no major engine leaks for now so I'm not too not too concerned I'm just gonna clean up what I can see I'm gonna leave this out because I don't know why that was there but it looks like someone's trying to stop the oil from um, from causing any trouble but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to keep on top of this myself and uh, remedy it properly at a later date. But for now, I'm gonna clean this up and fit the new distributor rotor arm. So there you can see the uh, comparison of the new one versus the old one. They're the same part, um, but you can just see there's less wear on the new one. That's literally the only difference. Right, so that's cleaned up a bit there. I'm just gonna get my new one now, pop that onto the shaft and oh, it's a nice tight fit. Um, now this is only gonna go on one way from the beginning. There's a flat spot on the rotor shaft. So if you find it, there we are. That should slide on a bit further than that maybe. Yeah. That might be it. Uh, yeah, it will slide on the wrong way. Um, the flat spot is not a flat spot, it's a groove. The groove in the shaft needs to line up with that plastic coloured slope inside, not the metal uh, insert. So if you line that up correctly, it does push on further. And that is on and in place, ready to go. So next thing is to unbolt the coil from its harness which uh, should just be those two flat head, uh, those two posi head screws and that 10mm bolt that should just take the top of the clamp fully off I should be able to unclip the uh, spade connectors and the coil will be free okay so I've just loosened this bolt and just cracked off these screws and it's become loose enough to slide the coil in and out so Let's get the new coil. Okay, so as we can see, this is the new coil. It um, only has studs on the end. It doesn't have anything for the spade connectors to go on, but it does come with a little hardware kit so that you can wind on some plates uh, with these nuts and make your own spade connector terminals. Um, it also comes with a clamp, which we don't need because we've got our own clamp here. So I'm just gonna remove this clamp and add some uh, hardware to these studs so that we can use the spade connectors. 
Okay, so here's the new coil with the speed terminals on. You can see the uh, plus and the minus there for positive and negative terminals. On the old coil, um, you can just see down there, there's a 15 on that side and a 1 on that side. So the 15 um, denotes positive and the 1 denotes negative. So I'm going to make sure that my coil is the same way round, like that. So I'm just going to take the spade connectors off. There we are. And slide the coil out. Okay, now I'll pop the new coil in. It's quite baggy in there, so I might have to provide some uh, ballast. It seems to be a bit thinner than the old coil. And uh, attach my spade clips. Okay, so I've just padded that out a little bit and uh, taped it up so that can slide into there. Get that to a central position. Pop my uh, spade connectors on. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a spray of WD-40 into the spade connector just to make sure the contact isn't too gummed up or anything and there's no crusty corrosion or anything like that happening. Just lubricates it nicely as well. That's a nice tight fit. That's what we like. Don't want anything uh, wriggling loose or vibrating off. So that is in place now. I just need to tighten this clamp back up and tighten down the clamp to the chassis. Okay, that's all fully tightened down. So that's ready to accept the new King lead. The distributor is ready to accept the new distributor cap. We just need to get the spark plugs out and um, replace those. Now before I do that, I'm just gonna inspect down near the spark plugs and just check and make sure there's no debris. If there is, I'm gonna vacuum that out. Can't see anything uh, too bad, but I might just I might just put a vacuum down there on a very small attachment just to get any dust or anything. I don't want anything falling into the cylinders. Speaking of cylinders, we've got a little endoscope here, so I think I'm gonna send that in to the uh, spark plug fitment holes and uh, inspect the cylinder walls. See what kind of condition they're in. Okay, so I'm just gonna reassemble this inside and then I can take it outside and just fit it straight back to the vehicle. So we've got the new distributor cap there. This is the old one. And we have four different lengths of uh, HT lead. Uh, along with a king lead that runs around to the back. So I've got my brand new Bosch HT leads and I'm just going to match it up to the way that we've got here. So if we start with the closest one to me, that is the third longest, at uh, the second longest, sorry. So I'll find the second longest plug lead. And that one will plug into the furthest right socket. Now, um, I like to just give my plugs a bit of a spray with WD-40 just to make sure they're getting a good connection. Um, make sure they're not going in dry and they're not able to corrode and become crusty. Also, WD-40 expels moisture, so it helps to stop moisture ingress. Let's see if we can just click that, click that in. So that's all, I just needed two hands to wiggle them together and uh, it clicks in quite nicely. It's a ribbed fit. So uh, second one along, if we follow this, goes to the longest lead. Get the longest one and give that a bit of a spray with WD. Yeah, it's kind of annoying when it's handheld, but that's how it is for today. Just Okay, it's running away from me. Just a little bit inside and just a little bit in the boot. Then this should There we 
we are. Got that one on. Third one along runs to the second shortest, and the fourth one goes to the shortest. And then the king lead is different to the others because it doesn't have a long boot on like this for the attachment to the spark plug, so that's easy. So I'm going to fit the rest of those now, there's no point in videoing that. So that's all of the leads pre-assembled onto the distributor cap and the distributor cap re-fitted uh, re to the end of the distributor housing. The thing left to do now is to pull the spark plugs and replace those and whilst they're out we might as well send an endoscope in and do a uh, cylinder bore inspection. So let's, uh, let's get these plugs out. Too bad. It's not feeling all it's not feeling all nasty and crusty. I've had a good look down there and there's such a small gap that even if I could get a vacuum in there, uh, I wouldn't be able to get it close enough to suck anything up. Also, upon inspection, I can't see anything of, of substance down there that needs to be vacuumed away. However, once the plug's out, I will send a vacuum hose in there just to uh, be on the safe side. So that's loose now, I just need to grab that. A really convenient way to do that is just to use the end of a plug lead. I'll just pull the plug out. So, you're here with me live as we uh, have the plug reveal. I wouldn't say that's in too bad nick, to be fair. There's a little bit of oil reaching up the uh, threads, but the seal seems to have done a good job because there's nothing on the body of the plug. If we just get some light going and try to zoom in here. So as you can see it's fairly dry, it's a little bit crusty but it's fairly dry. No damage as such. Good sign that the car's not been uh, worked on by idiots in the past. The colour of the spark plug is a light brown which is which means it's been running with a good mixture. The tip doesn't seem too badly damaged or worn away, although I don't know how tall that tip was when it was new. If you look on the underneath, focus. The underneath, if we can get it to focus. You can see there's barely any pitting or anything on there, so that's good. So these are in fairly good nick, but I don't know how old they are. There is a very comprehensive history with the vehicle, but um, it's that comprehensive that there's just hundreds of things to read through, so I haven't been able to check through it all yet. One thing I do know though is that I have plans for this and the plans unfortunately sir do not include you. Therefore if I'm going to be running more boost I'm going to need more fuel and more fuel and more boost amongst other things leads to different uh, situations and environments inside the cylinder inside the combustion chamber and therefore is suited to uh, well, not necessarily suited to the same spark plug that you're running at the moment. So, I've done a little bit of digging and I found somebody who successfully runs slightly different spark plugs to the ones that come with the vehicle on a setup very similar to the one that I'm going to be going for. And therefore, I thought I'd replace these plugs with the ones I'm going to have in there eventually anyway. And uh, see how we get on with those. So that's number one. Uh, let's take the rest out and uh, have a look at those. Here's number two. Again, good colour, good condition, no issues getting it out, a little bit of debris on there but nothing crazy. Number three, same story, looking good. And number four, pretty much the same story. I'm using the rubber tip inside this spark plug socket to hold this in and that's what I've been using to take the spark plugs out. But my little tip about using the end of a HD lead is for people who are using one of these where the uh, rubber tip has uh, perished or dried out or stops being effective or they just don't have spark plug sockets so they're just using regular sockets. Here's my endoscope. I've got it set up on another phone so get a nice, uh, nice little look at what's going on here. There we go. So we've got the piston in the bottom of the stroke, or at the bottom of its stroke. And we're looking, we're trying to look at the bore condition. Now, you can just see some cross hatching still there. 
which is a good sign. If it was all glazed, it wouldn't be so good. However, what we don't want to see is any deep scores, either horizontally or vertically. It's hard to, really is hard to sort of control this endoscope. Right, so we're getting a little bit better footage now. So you can see the, 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 the cross hatchings from the honing of the cylinder. Now there we can see some imperfection, which looks like corrosion to me, but it's hard to tell. Um, surface, the surface of the cylinder doesn't look, uh, the surface of the piston doesn't look too bad. There's not too much coke build up on there. And as we go around the bore, there's not too much in terms of, there's nothing standing out to me. In terms of damage, but you know this is just a cheap endoscope. It's not giving me the best picture. I don't really know which way I'm facing it, so you know there's there's better ways of doing this, and uh, obviously nothing beats taking the head off. But I'll check the other cylinders and just see if there's anything else I can see. Okay, so we're in cylinder two here, and again it's hard to see, but you, you can see the cross cross hatching for the bores. The cylinder walls, even the bores within the bore along the cylinder wall. The piston's got a little bit of coke build up, but nothing crazy. Uh, it's all cross hatching on the on the cylinder wall that side. And as we move round, it, there is a light on the end of the the camera, but it's it's hard to um, project the camera in a certain direction. But everywhere I check, it's you know it's looking uniform. It's just the cross hatch marks. Not very much glazing whatsoever. Um, so I'm quite happy up to now. Okay, so the other two bores were pretty much the same, so I'm happy with those. So time to install the new plugs. I'm going with NGK BCR 8ES, and they're going to be replacing NGK R BPR 6ES. So with the higher number, you get a a cooler burn, it's a cooler plug. So a cooler plug is more suited to higher boost applications. If we take one out of its uh, out of the box and compare them, I mean they are a 16mm drive rather than a 21 but that's that's not an issue as long as the thread is the same length which it is. It's uh, pre-gapped for us so we're good to go, we just need to put these plugs in, just nip them up and uh, we can pop the HT leads on and start her up, make sure she uh, runs okay. Right, that is our plugs in, so we're going to start with the shortest plug lead. Give you some light, and we're going to go in there and I can barely see myself but it's there is a spark plug tip there, and we just need to get nice satisfying click there we go there we go then I'm going with the second one um, that plug oh I almost forgot I almost forgot to put a little bit of WD-40 inside the uh, Inside the HT lead plug just helps to uh, make sure there's no moisture in the area between this and the spark plug, and therefore you won't get any crusty corrosion, and uh, you'll get uh, less resistance on the spark, and you know all that good stuff. So I'll go back and do the first one with some WD. I've finished the rest off there, so we're all plugged in and ready to start up now. Let's give it a go.
That's running good as ever. At least we know all of the ignition components are now in good condition. <laughs> 